Today I've got a mini mega bee craft video. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. We're going to start off with a Dollar Tree placemat. And then I have two printouts and I've got the links in the description box below for you of bees and honey. These are the two white 8x10 frames from Dollar Tree. Start by taking off the backing and the paper that's on the inside. You can leave the glass in. And we're going to use the back of this just to show you that you can get two backings from this. We're going to fold it in half. I creased it with my finger. Now I'm going to use my little Cricut tool and just press it down. This is going to make a nice little seam and a line so we can cut it right down the middle. Get some good sharp scissors and cut right through it. Now this is not fabric, it's plastic. Just cut through there. And then I'm going to use my rotary tool to trim it down to make it the same size as the backing. All right, I'm going to use hot glue. You can use a couple of dots here or straight lines, whatever you choose to put this down. Now when I put this down, it didn't even cross my mind that this is like a mesh and then it would stick out. But you see how it comes out the top? You can rub that glue right off and it just completely disappears. It just becomes part of that mesh underneath and goes away. So you can see it just beads up. Just roll it with your finger and it'll come right off. But don't do that when it's super hot unless you get finger protectors on. You don't want to lose your fingerprints. Just comes off real easy. Okay, now it's invisible. You can barely even tell it was there. And it is securely on the backing of our frame. Now I'm going to take my two signs. I'm going to take the first one and you're going to try to aim for about a five by seven um, when you get done. That way you have plenty of border showing around the outside. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I really didn't do like exact measurements. And then you can just use your top, your first picture to help measure your second picture. Now I'm just trying to figure out my center and I'm just going to stick it down with some double stick tape. Simple, simple. Mod Podge would probably be too big of a mess here and this tape holds it beautifully where you have no wrinkles, no smudging, no smearing, or any other type of problem. And I did use an inkjet printer to print off these beautiful little printables. Y'all need to look at my Pinterest too because I have lots of free printables over there. Um, they're from other people. I didn't make the printables, but I am sharing them. So you can go to my Pinterest. You can find all those um, links in the description box below. So I'm going to put the back back on it and look how perfect that is. Isn't that beautiful? It's like a double matted framed picture. So pretty. So I'm just running you back through how we do this with the second one. Same thing, trim it down. Doesn't have to be exact. And the good thing about these lines is you can kind of eyeball it to make sure that everything is lined up like it should be. Nice and straight. But you can use any type of backing that you like. I thought that this black and white was beautiful with the bee prints. Isn't that gorgeous? So cute. Moving on to the next one. We're going to use one of these stacked book little decorations from a Dollar Tree. They're not put together very well, but you know, you can fix that if you want. Or you can take the attitude that I had and nobody's going to look at the bottom or back. So you can just leave it alone. I took the little sad ribbon off, but we are going to use it. And then I've got some more beautiful ribbon from Dollar Tree. Love the blue ribbon, I mean the bee ribbon, the honeycomb, and then the gold I already had. That came from the thrift store, I believe. I'm using some plaster chalk paint, but you can use whatever color you like. I think the white's going to be pretty here. And then these little dippers, these little spoons that I got from Goodwill. And then these gorgeous yellow flowers. Just because they coordinate, you can use whatever color you like. I'm trying to stick with my theme of black, yellow, gold, white, you know, for bees. And I think it's a beautiful transition from coming out of winter and attempting to have some type of a spring weather. I live in the south, so we get spring early here. We get a very short winter. So if you live in the south, this type of thing might be right up your alley. Or if you live up north and you're cold, this ought to warm you right up. So I'm just going to paint this, all the surfaces that I'll see, and I'm going to use the back part of this beautiful calendar from Dollar Tree. 
and trim it down. You know, there's a little bitty ones and there's a larger one that's in the corner. I'm just using my little trimmer here. I've got something close to it in my Amazon store. You can find that length in the description box <laughs> if you are looking for something like this. Not the exact one, but something similar. I'm gonna use my glue stick here to put this down on the box or the books, whichever one you wanna call it. And you can stick this down any way you want. Use your double stick tape if that's what you have. Use your Mod Podge if that's what you have. This works fine for me. I'm just gonna kinda pat it down with my hands in the spot that I lower than the middle because I wanna put something on the top. And then I'm just using my brayer to press it down, but you can use whatever you want to make sure that it is firmly affixed to your surface. Now I have these manicure scissors that I use all the time in crafting for my little fussy cutting, and I'm gonna just use it to go down the centers where the separations in the books would be. Just to give it a little depth so that you can see that brown through there, it gives it a little shadow and makes it appear more like books stacked on top of one another. You certainly don't have to do that, and if you just barely put any on, like I did on this end, then you wouldn't have to work so hard like I'm doing now. Hindsight, right? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take this spoon and we're going to put some hot glue in it. Now, if you have yellow glue sticks or gold glue sticks, you could definitely use that, but I don't. So I'm gonna make do with what I have. I'm gonna add a big spoon full of what is going to be our honey on here and I'm going to hold it upright so that it will form a drip. And you can see here that it's starting to drip. I have sped it up a little bit, but it's starting to drip. Watch your fingers, it's hot. Let it drip down a little bit. Give it a second to, to kind of firm up and then sit it down, let it dry the rest of the way. And look at that, perfect. Now we're gonna go on to our book while that is sitting up. And I'm just taking the side of the lid of a pencil and going across, dragging it across the edge of the books to make it look like pages. Make it a little more realistic, I think. And then the same thing on this side, just drag it across back and forth. And then after you've gotten that done, you can just take your fingers or the side of your hand and just smear it just a little bit. And you see, it kind of looks like pages, right? Now, I'm attempting to make a glaze here. I'm using some gloss Mod Podge and some King's Gold. I'm gonna shake them up. I'm gonna use more of that Mod Podge and just a little bit of that really strongly pigmented gold there. I'm gonna mix it up. You can add some brown to it to make it look more like a, the brown of honey, whichever one you wanna do. But this was an experiment for me, so I think in the end it turned out good. Mix it up really well, and then I'm gonna use a fine little tip brush here to go just along all around where the hot glue is. I'm not coloring my spoon with it because I want this to look like, to some extent, it should represent honey, right? It takes a few coats so that you don't have brush marks in here anymore, but be sure that you let it dry nicely between each coat. Then I'm going to, while it's drying, work on decorating the book stack. So the binders of the books need a little something. And rather than writing, I thought it would be nice to just use some decorations on the spines of the books. So that's what I'm doing here. No words, just decorations. I'm using double stick tape and then a length of my ribbon to go on the top. And I'm just gonna kind of alternate. I'm gonna use the honeycomb on the top and then the next layer will be the bees. And there's definitely a pattern to these bees upright and upside down. So just be, you might want to be mindful of that if in the end you find out that you put your bees on upside down after you've completed your work and then your heart is broken. Okay, so now we're down to the last layer and this is how it's going to look. And I, and I like it so far. Sometimes, you know, you just got to keep going on something when you kind of hesitate. Just keep going with it and see what happens. I mean, it's crafting. We make mistakes and we can fix things easily. So if the edges hanging over a little bit bother you, just take a little bit of your stick glue, rub it on there and then press it down and hold it for a second and it will cup under for you. So now the same two ribbons that I used before, I'm going to cut the same length and we're gonna use that to go around the top of our box. And I think I have a, 
about 18 inches of ribbon in this. I think that's what it is. And I still have some ribbon left over, so I'm glad of that because I really, really like this. Now I'm fiddling around here to try to decide what type of a knot I want or how I want this ribbon to lay. So I've just decided to double knot the gold over the top of the, the little bee ribbon. And you can just twist those. If they won't lay right, use a little, little dab of glue and then it'll, it'll stay just, you know, where you put it. But I like it right around the top. And I'm just going to slant cut these ribbons. I can't imagine trying to take the time to dovetail these. They're just, they're small ribbons. I don't think it's necessary. But you do whatever your little heart desires. Now, those little tails are staying exactly where I put them. And I'm going to add a flower because you've got to have flowers there, right, for bees? I could have used the little same flowers as on the box, but I just decided to use the roses. Now you can see this is an example of how they turn out when you've had several layers of paint. I think it looks like it has a little honey on it, maybe mustard. Okay, so I'm just going to divide the bottom just a little bit so we can see both colors. I think it gives a nice little touch. And I've just tucked that honey spoon right underneath the knot. Look at it from all your little angles and decide what else you need. I wanted to trim this stem a little bit and then make a few more little additions. You could also use something like a, if you had like a little, a jeweled bee, or if you had a button with the bee on it, that would be really precious here if you wanted to try that. I'm just gonna use the head off of one of the other little roses, and I'm going to tuck that right under that knot, and it will also help hold that spoon handle in place. So now, now they're all secure. What do you think about it? I really like this one. So cute, and I've never done a book stack before as a project, so this is my first time. What do you think? I think it looks pretty good. For the next one, I'm going to use one of these little printouts. I will link the video below where I made these. I'm going to use some glossy Mod Podge. I'm going to use some foam, a little watering can, some of these little flowers, and some greenery. Use whatever you like. So this is printed on tissue paper. All you have to do is just cut this out. You don't have to cut it real close because you're not going to see that because the backing is white and so is the can. I'm going to add my Mod Podge down in the area that I will be adding my little beehive or my skip, whichever one this is, since it has a little door on it. Whoops. Okay. Now I'm going to gently press this in place. This is tissue paper, so keep in mind it is fragile. You don't want to be too rough with this. And then I'm going to help lay my edges down in the, the um, Mod Podge that's already there by just taking that same brush and just going over the top. Now you can see that I'm taking this flat brush and tapping it into the cracks in the, the details in that can. I like to do this because this makes it look more like it is hand painted. And then same thing here. If you need to add a little more Mod Podge, just add it on there. You could use school glue also if you would like, but I'm not sure that it has a glossy finish. And like I said, the can has an enamel look, so I want this to kind of blend in. And this is how it looks. Look, my baby cane. He wanted to put his hand in there, so he's giving me some love. Got to stop for the love, right? All right. A little more Mod Podge on there after it dries, just to keep everything secure and make sure everything is blended in nicely. I love this. These are so sweet. I mean, not if you get stung, but really, if you if you think about their sense of community and, and the way they protect one another, it's just a beautiful thing. There you go. Be sure to follow me on my social media, on Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter. All right, so now all you have to do is start adding in your florals. I lost a piece of my footage. I don't know what happened. Can't find it. The camera ate it. So I'll tell you what I did briefly. If you imagine a star shape, right in the center of that star is where I placed my tallest greenery pick. And then I made points out from that 
with greenery. And then working my way upward, I added in my little flower picks. And I did that all the way around. And now what you're seeing me do is just going back in there with the extra little pieces and adding those in. You know how I do this. I use pretty much the same te technique every time. And I have lots of videos where I do floral arrangements and things like that. So be sure you go, you know, check those out. Go to my videos and find the ones that have floral, floral arranging. And you can find some, some details, some better details on that. Again, I'm sorry about that. It, it's just gone. I don't know. It's gone. But now I'm just filling it out. Um, one thing I always do is turn my project from side to side. Um, you could use a turntable if that's helpful to do that. And just go round and round. Make sure you don't have any foam showing. Make sure everything is balanced and pretty. And I love the look of this white and green. It's so simple and cottagey to me. And I think it's just beautiful for springtime. Very simple and pretty. And you can use any type of greenery you have. You can use thrifted stuff. You can pull it off of other things that you have and use it again. I mean, repurpose your things. Really stretch your dollar. Okay, now I'm going to take three pieces of jute. And these are about two feet long, these stretches, these pieces. I get my jute from the Dollar Tree, but I do thrift it. When I see it, I pick it up because I use it a lot. And I'm going to pull it up here around right under the lip and I'm gonna give it a tie and then you can keep your things from slipping around if you just use a little bit of hot glue under the knot it won't slide down especially when you have those cans that you get from Dollar Tree those little planters that are silver with the rope on them they taper downward so if you tie anything around the top it's gonna fall unless you add a little glue so just keep that in mind I'm just tying very simple bow here and I'm gonna trim off my ends for a little extra embellishment on the top. And now I'm gonna add my other honey spoon. Hot glue, I'm gonna place it kind of behind the bow and then pull my bow up and then separate those little layers of the strings. This adds that little rustic touch that I love to my cottage pieces. And I think it is just adorable. What do you think? Is this something you might try? If you can't find the exact thing, you can always find something similar. This shouldn't even be a DIY, but I did do it myself, so I guess it qualifies. So these little candles came from Dollar Tree. I grabbed them knowing I could use them for these bee projects. Take a little piece of ribbon and go around the neck of each one of these. On this one, I'm gonna use the gold and I'm gonna use that black and white that I already had. How about that? I'm going to wrap this one around and I'm going to tie it very simply. You can use a dot of glue to hold that there in place if you need to and then tie a double knot. I'm going to tuck underneath a little piece of greenery. You can go ahead and use the same that you used in the, the planter or the, um, the watering can if that's what you want to do. But I thought this yellow would be really pretty with this gold ribbon. So I just went ahead and used it. It's just a scrap. I keep all my little scraps and baskets and bowls and I just use them again. And I'm just tying two bows, one on top of the other one. Because they're so small, I couldn't tie them all at once. So I just tied them one on top of the other and they're overlapping. See how that's sticking out? All you gotta do is use a little drop of hot glue under the end and it'll glue straight down. Look at that. And there's the third one. I want you to try these projects. I believe in you. I know that you can do it. I've got lots of crafty people in my community and I'm getting so much wonderful feedback about inspiration, that you're feeling inspired, that you're crafting, maybe you haven't crafted in a while and you're dragging your stuff back out and you're getting back into it. There's something to me so relaxing and joyous about crafting and be in, just being expressive through your own crafting. You don't have to be just like anybody else. You don't have to do just like everybody else. If you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing. I promise you will not regret it. Project number one. Did I mention we're gonna be using some Dollar Tree items? Okay, we're gonna need some Waverly chalk paint and a chippy brush. I have my Farm Fresh calendar that my sister picked up for me. 
and we're going to use the August 2022 artwork. I'm going to use this puzzle box. It was a puzzle or a dress up girl box. I get these all the time at the thrift store, so you're probably going to find something like it, but they make the perfect shadow boxes and they're lightweight and a good big size. So we're going to start off by removing our calendar page without tearing it. So I'm just trying to crease it a little bit and then I decided to take my metal ruler's edge and just cut right through the page so that I could pull it off a little bit better. It pretty much scores it, makes a nice clean line. Even with that, my picture is a little too big. So I'm just going to take my metal ruler and my rotary tool and just trim that down. And I do make a little trim on the top and on the bottom so that I get a nice fit on the inside. Okay, so you see that the back of the page has black writing. If you use a color in the background that is like a gray or a black, it's gonna make that disappear. So that's what I'm doing here. But I'm not gonna go all the way to the outside because I want this to have white on the parts that are visible. So I'm just gonna take my gray paint, just one sloppy, sloppy coat here. You don't have to be perfect with it. And then once it dries, I'm gonna go ahead and take the white paint and I'm just gonna give it kind of a, a dry brushed effect. I like the little wood showing through the paint, and so that's what you see me doing here. You just kind of tap off the paint, and I'm just using what's in the lid to just brush over here. I'm gonna use the same technique on the edges of the box, and then when I get to the inside, I'm gonna make the coat a little bit thicker. You can see right here what we're doing. I want to take this opportunity to invite you all to come over to my community tab. When you're subscribed, you'll be able to um, participate with that. Come to my community tab and just chat with us, visit with us, do the polls that we're doing. So you can see here how I'm making this thicker because you'll be able to see it. Now we're going to put our calendar down. I've got my gray in the middle and my white border and I'm just going to use a glue stick to put this down. But you can use whatever technique you like as far as gluing it down. You can even use some double stick tape if that's what you got available. You can use Mod Podge, whatever you have. So I'm just going to put this all over the gray section and right on the edge of the white so that everything sticks down nicely. And you can see how it kind of blends into the background now to look like one big picture. I'm going to take my little Mod Podge tool here, a little scraper tool or squeegee tool, and just working a little bit from the inside to the outside so that I can press out any bubbles that may be in there. Inevitably, bubbles will pop up. Just do your best. Do your best with them, um, you know, depending on what you have, you may be able to lift them up a little and press them out. Now, I found this at, I think it was Dirt Cheap. And it's just some paper. You can see it's just some paper here. They have theirs um, as a like a table runner. Use it for that. But it fits nicely on the back here. It's a little overlap, but that's fine. And from now on, I'll be using this to back my projects that they will look nice and neat on the back because this is kind of nasty looking. I want it to be pretty from all angles. So I'm just using hot glue, but you can use whatever you want to use to stick yours down. This makes it quick and it makes a nice clean clean look. I'm just pressing this down on the edges because I'll be using my sanding block in just a moment to, um, to sand that off. So continuing around the box, I'm just gonna work quickly so that my glue doesn't lift away. And it will, if you leave too much time, it won't stick. So just be careful. And continuing to crease around the edges until I get the entire thing done. This last little part, you have to turn your, um, your glue gun sideways and then put it right into that crack, but it works. Then my foam sanding blocks, which I love. I love these things. I get them from Dollar Tree or Dollar and a Quarter Tree, as I like to say. And then you can see here, it just cuts right through that paper. It just takes it right off. Now, if you don't have this paper, you can't find it, not a big deal. Get that brown, I think it's postage paper. You can get it on a big roll at the Dollar Tree and you can use it, cut it down and use it for the back of your projects. It works really good. You could even, if you wanted to be fancy, use some maybe floral or decorative crafting paper. I think they come in 12 by 12. So, you know, if you've got anything smaller than that, it would work perfectly for that. 
especially if you used to maybe scrapbook and you don't anymore, there's an idea for you. You can use those supplies. Okay, so you can see here, I just have a little bit I need to pull off where my glue overlapped, but otherwise it looks nice, right? Yep, so now we need a hanger in case we want to hang it rather than having it sit up, but it will sit nice. Um, you'll see at the end when I do my final reveal, you'll see that I have mine showcased um, sitting up. But you can do this to hang it. I want to just give you that option. This makes a really easy hanger. Again, it gives you a very neat backing in case you wanted to give it as a gift or, you know, you just want it to look nice in your home. Make sure it's all stuck down good. Take off my little spider webs from the glue gun and then you can see how it would look. And there's our beautiful little shadow box B artwork. I love this. So here is my video schedule on Mondays and Thursdays at five. Project number two is going to be a thrift flip. I found a beautiful little pewter tray or a little dish, little trinket dish. You can see what's on the back. I got it at the thrift store and it needs a little love and I know exactly what I want to do to it. Always start by cleaning your supplies that you get from the Dollar Tree and then from any place really if you think that you're going to be painting it because you don't want to leave little residue of wax and things like that which is what was on here. So maybe somebody used it as a candle holder. But they hid the beautiful bee. So we're going to do something better to it. Now I'm just using a little wipe here, it's say an alcohol wipe, and I'm just going to use it and rub off that tag too. I'm going to use some satin blossom white Rust-Oleum paint and spray it down outside and give it two good coats. And so this is how it looks. The back, I don't like so much. I think I'm going to paint it black, but I know around the edges I'm going to use black. I tried a marker originally and the marker looked awful, so I touched it up and then going back over it with a makeup sponge. So I'm just going to get some black chalkboard paint, I think I got it from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to go around the edge here with my makeup sponge, just tapping it off a little bit so that it doesn't leave any run over on the sides there and onto the top because I want it to look nice and clean. This is so easy. This was easier than using a marker, so I do recommend using this technique if you want to try to do the enamel look. I think this is cute. I love this little bee dish. All right, so after I do that, I do go ahead and paint the back and then I allow it to dry. See there? Nice, that looks better. Now I'm going to take my antiquing wax here and a chippy brush. I'm going to tap off a lot of that. And then I'm going to focus in the crevices around this bee dish. Now, like all the indentions and the, um, you know, the outline, I guess I should say, of this bee. I want to work that in there because I want to leave some shadow and some dimension that you don't otherwise see in the dish as we had it originally. But you can leave it that way. So I'm just wiping it back a little bit, and that's just a dry sock that I'm repurposing that didn't have a match. You know the dryer likes to eat those things. And then I'm just gonna tap some down in there and lightly rub back over until I get the finish that I like. The idea is not to have the entire dish looking antique, but rather to have the indention shown up. Be sure to follow me on my social media. You can find me on Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter. Now for project number three, we're going to go back to Dollar Tree. This beautiful little, I guess this is a vase. I found it at Dollar Tree. So pretty. I took the little embellishment off. This is a little thrifted cork light, but you can use any type of fairy lights that you have. Doesn't have to be this. I'm going to use a little wood bead. I have a little, um, I guess it's a candle holder that's going to help me hold things in place while I work. I'm going to use some jute, and this is some thick jute. I'm going to sit it down in there and protect my fingers, and we're going to begin to make a top for this so that it doesn't look like a glass vase anymore. So I'm just putting my protected finger in the center and then just kind of working around, adding the glue where I need it. 
It looks kind of oval right now, but you know, it's fixed. In the end, it's fixed. You can overlap it. You can make this as thick as you want to make it. And I do actually, after I get it wrapped around as flat as I can get it on the flat part, I do go over that little ridged area there and then onto the part that goes down that would be like the base area. It's just a, maybe a couple of centimeters, but I do wrap that up as well because this will look more like a topper than just you know, a little bit of rope wound up on the bottom. You can see how I went over the edges, like that. And you can just wipe off some of that glue. It's gonna come out of your jute. Just wipe it off. It's real easy to remove. Just wanna make it look nice and neat. Then I'm gonna take my bead and put it in the center. This is how it's looking so far. I love that the amber color of this vase and it just looks like it reminds me of like a beehive so I thought this is definitely what I want to use it for so I'm also going to do this area and cover that completely up and this is easy to do I should have been protecting my fingers so I would be a good example for everybody but uh, I was running with the you know how it is when you get that little spark and you just you get the ideas running and, and you just go for it. That's kind of what I was doing here with this one. So once you get enough on there, you can trim it off. You don't want to cover the lip because it might not sit flat. Again, with our antiquing wax, I'm going to add a little bit there on the bottom and just kind of take a very stiff, also like a chippy brush, but it's a, um, it's a stencil brush. And I'm going to use a little bit at a time to build up the color that I want. I want the color to match sort of what's going on in the beehive um, as far as the, the depth of the tone. I don't want to get it super dark. And if I used a regular paintbrush and just went full force, it would turn this a waxy brown color. And that is not what I'm going for. I just want it to look as though it is aged. And I want it to blend nicely with what is going on in the glass. So we're going to go down to the bottom, or what used to be the top, and work on that too. Just going back and forth and stippling. And that glue is really holding well on this glass. And so this is the color I think I like. Very pretty. But you can continue to add as much as you want for this. And I did see one of these little vases in Dollar Tree a few days ago, so you can find them. So now the idea here... I'm going to use just a tiny bit of glue in the opening to hold down my little control so that it stays in place when I put it on the base that I've created. So you can use a little piece of wood, a little round wood. You could sit it back in that little vase or candle holder over there if you'd like. You can use it just like this and that just gives you an idea how that would look. Or you can use like a, a candle topper, like an um, old candle topper topper or a jar top like a jar lid and I really like this aged one this is one that's been through the dishwasher a few times and the edges are very aged but it doesn't have the color that I want so in order to give it a more rustic or a more aged look I'm going to take that same antiquing wax and I'm going to go around all of the edge get in every one of those little cracks there every one of those little indentions right down into the lip where it curls over and then all over the top you can let your wax sit after you get it on there and let it dry a little bit and then wipe it back and that will give you a little more of an aged look and if you like this look you certainly don't have to wipe it back at all but you will need to let it dry before you continue with your project but for purposes of the video so I can help you to understand, I am going to wipe this back and leave. See how it sinks down into the indentions? I love that. I just, I love that. Even though I'm transitioning more to a cottage look, I, I have to have some rustic in there somewhere. How adorable is this? Is that not the cutest thing? I believe in you. I really do. And I know that you could do something like this and it'll be so amazing. Here are some of the things that we did in the last B video, along with some of the things that we did in this B video. 
so that you can see they work really well together. Y'all keep in mind my goal is 15,000 subscribers by August the 1st. So if you're watching this video and you really love budget friendly DIYs and you like the style in this video and the links that I will be leaving for you, please consider subscribing and joining the family and helping me on my goal. I would love that. Thanks to everybody who has been supporting me so far. I love you guys and I have had so much fun. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you again soon.